Help it. From badass golden light guns to one-of-a-kind Atari cartridges, we count 15 of the rarest and most expensive games of all time. Number 15. Elemental Gear Bolt Assassin's Case Edition. Getting this PlayStation 1 game will cost you between $1,400 and $1,750 US dollars. There are only 40 copies of this edition of the game as a case was awarded during a 1998 E33 tournament. The case includes the game, a golden light gun, not real gold mind you, but still cool looking, and a memory card that's also golden. As you might expect, Elemental Gear Bolt's a light gun game with an orchestral soundtrack and a science fantasy theme with RPG elements. It was a pretty uncommon combination of genres at the time, and the game earned multiple awards because of it. Number 14. Eli's Ladder This is the rarest educational game ever made, and getting it for the Atari 2600 will set you back anywhere between $1,500 and $1,700 US dollars. It's not priced so high for being an amazing educational game, they just didn't produce many copies of it. The game came with motivational stickers and a wall chart designed for children, which are equally hard to find because what kid's going to be able to resist stickers or ripping up a wall chart? The gameplay is pretty simple. You answer math questions about addition and subtraction, and interestingly enough, they advertise the game as focusing on drill and practice gameplay, which sounds like a bunch of lovely fun. Number 13. Karate. Ultra Vision Release. Another 2600 game. Better get used to them because they're all over this list. Buying one of these in mint condition will cost around 4000 US dollars. Despite the fact the functionally identical Frago release is actually pretty common. Interestingly enough, Ultravision intended to make their own console but ended up only releasing two poor quality games, one of which being Karate which was also sold by Frago. So basically you're paying $4000 for a label. This game was designed by Black Belt Yosef Emilio but I can't find anything about him online so I guess it's just some Karate Master the devs new or maybe he beat up the game cart until it learned karate that would explain the price number 12 answer software's gauntlet no it's not that gauntlet but it is an extremely rare game that'll cost you between 3,000 and 5,000 us dollars if it actually ever goes up for sale no one's been willing to part with it since the early 2000s the game was only sold through mail order and it didn't even come with a proper case instead it had a flimsy foam casing that was probably only included to protect the game during transit this gauntlet is basically an indiana jones ripoff the main character looks like indy and you run through a gauntlet in the jungle in an effort to impress a tribe of warriors number 11 tetris mega drive release or Genesis if you're a filthy American. Yes, the most ubiquitous game ever. Well, maybe it's Minecraft now. Anyways, the Mega Drive edition of Tetris is extremely rare with the cheapest copy going for around 3,000 US dollars, proving once and for all that collectors value rarity over gameplay. Not only that, but it wasn't legal for Sega to sell because Nintendo held the license for Tetris at the time. Sega produced and sold it anyways, hoping no one would notice. I guess it's not like you can mess up Tetris that easily, can you? Oh wait, yeah, I forgot about EA. I think I might actually prefer to spend 3,000 bones on this than be forced to play the crime against gaming that's the mobile version of Tetris. Number 10. King of Fighters 2000, English release. There's only a hundred of these babies out there, so it's really hard to get your hands on this one. Not only that, but it's also completely legit. Like all games on this list, re-releases did nothing to tamper with its value, with copies selling between 3,500 and 6,000 US dollars. I'm guessing the only reason why there's so few of them is that the Neo Geo was incredibly expensive and far from popular. So anything even remotely niche from Japan couldn't have received good sales without a decent marketing push. Not to mention the Dreamcast and the PS2 were on the horizon, so the Neo Geo was basically on its deathbed. Also, I'm like most of the games on this countdown, this one's actually fun. Oh, until you get to the end and the boss kicks your ass a dozen times, but up until then it's pretty fun. Number 9. Ultimate 11 or Super Sidekicks 4 European Release one of the few sports games on the Neo Geo, you'd think the European version would do better in a region that actually follows soccer. Oh, that's gonna piss people off. I mean, football. Pricing for this is only based on rumors because it's just that rare, although rumors say it's worth between 4,800 and 10,000 US dollars. It's odd that a simple region change will cause such a massive price hike. I mean, it plays no different than its American cousin, it's just the European version. This is actually the final release in the Super Sidekick series. It includes 80 national teams, and this version apparently no longer keeps track of which player score goals. But if you play well, a boss team appears that uses SNK fighting game characters as players. Number 8. Atlantis 2. This was only given to the top players in the Atlantis 1 competition, which actually ended up having a $10,000 reward. Now, if the player held onto the cartridge, she could be doubly rich, as it can go anywhere between 5000 and 18000 US dollars. It just goes to show how big Atari was back in the day. The top four players were sent to Bermuda to face off, although the flip side of that is no one actually knows who won that competition anymore. While it's called Atlantis 2, it's actually the same game, just made harder. You know, harder to score, the game moves faster, that kind of thing. These days, we'd call it a mod or a 
hack. The cartridge and packaging doesn't even have any differences from the original apart from the white sticker on the front, though considering the nature of collectibles that's probably one seriously expensive white sticker. Peeling that bad boy off's probably like throwing away $5,000. Number 7. Kazuna Encounter, European release. Another game with the only pricing being based on rumors. Apparently it's been sold for around 13,000 US dollars, but who really knows with rumors? It's been described as the holy grail of European game collecting, for whatever that's worth. It's an SNK tag battle fighting game for the Neo Geo, as well as arcades, although it's actually impossible to know if it's even commercially released. Allegedly, it was released in Germany and Austria right before it was recalled, but since this all happened before the internet was cool, there's no documentation proving it either way, although I'm willing to bet SNK knows. Number 6. Red Sea Crossing Funnily enough, the 100 cartridges made of this game were all thought to be lost to time. But then in 2007, someone found it at a garage sale, then went around and resold it for nearly $14,000 redues. Then a second one was found at Medium Bob's Curiosity Shop in Philadelphia, which was resold for $10,000 US dollars. Not quite $14,000, but that's still one valuable piece of silicon and plastic. Part of what makes this one feel valuable is that there's no emulated version to play. If you want to play Red Sea Crossing, you're gonna have to spend a lot of moolah, but at the end of the day, it's an Atari game, so it's more about the amazing rarity than it is about the amazing gameplay. Well, you know, at least at a $14,000 price tag anyways, that's steep. For that amount of money, you could go to Vegas and have 280 good times in a row, if you catch my drift. Number 5. 1991 Nintendo Campus Challenge Everyone knows about the gold 1990 World Championship cartridge, but this game's actually incredibly close to its value, with the most expensive sale going for $21,100. Instead of the World Championship, where it's mostly kids playing, this one was focused on university students. On this cart, you tried to get the high score in Mario 3, Pinbot, and Dr. Mario within 6 minutes. The cartridges were meant to be destroyed after the competition was over, but an ex-Nintendo employee sold one at a garage sale. I mean, he worked for Nintendo, how could he not see free video games? game money when it's right in front of his face. Number 4. Air Raid this game with its box is worth up to 33,400 US dollars, but without it, it's actually reasonably common and only worth about 3,000. The cartridge is light blue and has a T-shaped handle, which I guess makes it harder to counterfeit, but I'm sure someone out there's at least tried. The gameplay involves shooting down flying saucers and airplanes from your own aircraft, although you'll have to take the box art's word for it as the game's graphics are pretty rough. Number 3. 1990 Nintendo World Championships Gold Edition here we are, the most famous of the rare cartridges, which is probably why it's more valuable and sought after than the one-of-a-kind college campus edition. Despite what you might have read in the news last year, it never actually sold for $100,000. Its record remains $21,000, which is still impressive. The gold cartridge is mostly unrelated to the World Championship since it was a Nintendo Power Contest prize. One grand prize winner and 25 runner-ups got the carts, but only a few have been found. Number 2. Birthday Mania As far as we know, there's only one of these in the wild. It was marketed as a birthday gift where you'd mail it in for a personalized title screen and a space on the front where names could be written. The game hasn't been sold on the internet, so its value can only be estimated. There's only one confirmed in existence, and each one is personalized, so it's valued at roughly $35,000. The gameplay involves blowing out birthday candles, which I think is its major downfall. What kid wants to blow out candles on a day other than his birthday? Though if you're all alone, you could have the saddest possible birthday ever with it. Nintendo's my only friend. Number 1. Gamma Attack A one-of-a-kind game that has a value of over $50,000. It's the only game made by the company Gamma Asian, and the current owner has claimed to have had offers for much more than $10,000, but more than that, we don't really know. However, since the big sale, Gamma Asian has re-released the game on eBay, and the ROM has been leaked on the internet. And to be frank, it's not really fun, it's just another shooty game with epileptic fit-inducing graphics and limited motion. But it's still considered by many to be the most rare and valuable game in the world, and I'd be remiss not to put it at the top, even if it's not very famous. At the end of the day, it's about rarity and how much people are willing to pay for it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.